just wanna thank, thank you. Amen. God bless you. 
Amen. Good to see you. Amen. Amen. My little niece. Amen. Oh, she can sing, y'all. She got here early. I didn't have her to sing. <laughs> Amen. Good, good to see you. Amen. With a mother. Amen. God bless you. You got your two sisters with you. Amen. God bless you. Praise God. Luke chapter 19, when you have it, say amen. amen. Come on, sound like you got some authority. When you got it, say amen. amen. Verse 29 through 38, the Bible says, And it came to pass when he was come nigh to Bethpage and Bethany at the mount called the Mount of Olives. He sent two of his disciples, saying, Go ye into the village over against you, in which at your entering ye shall find a coat tied. Whereon yet never a man who sat, loose him and bring him hither. And if any man asks you, why do you loose him? Thus shall you say unto him, because the Lord has need of him. And they that were sent went their way and found even as he has said unto them. And as they were loosing the coat, the owners thereof said unto them, why loose ye the coat? And they said, The Lord has need of him. And they brought him to Jesus. And they cast their garments upon the coat, and they set Jesus thereon. And as he went, they spread their clothes in the way. Verse 37 says, And when he was come nigh, even now at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works that they had seen saying blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the lord peace in heaven and glory in the highest and some of the pharisees from among the multitude said unto him master rebuke thy disciples and he answered and said unto them i tell you that if these shall hold their peace the rocks or the stones would immediately cry out can you say amen? amen? And some of the Pharisees from among the multitude said unto him, Master, rebuke thy disciples. And he answered and said unto them, I tell you, if these shall hold their peace, the stones would immediately cry out. Can you say amen? amen. Now look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I don't need no rock to cry out for me. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. My text will be coming from verses 38. I want to read verses 36 to 38 once again. It says, As he went, they spread their clothes in the way. And when he was come nigh, even at the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice. For all the mighty works that he had seen. Saying, Let's be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. I want to talk to you from the subject, the king that rode on a donkey. The king that rode on a donkey. Somebody say, that's my king. That's my king. Amen, somebody. An interesting article um, that I was reading talks about the time when Paris became free. This article says that after the Normandy invasion, Paris uh, waited for liberation. Uh, the resistance tracked, y'all, the slow that progress out of the Normandy coast uh, towards that of Paris. This article says on August 19th, the communist-led French resistance rose up against the German army commanded by General Diedrich Kurz. And at first, y'all, the German commander tried to work out deal, a deal with the free French under one by the name of Charles de Gaulle. But the, uh, the negotiations had broken down and the Germans had counterattacked them with tanks. 
Uh, this article says, Brother Jones, that Hitler, who had ordered that the city be destroyed, asked his staff a question, and the question was, is Paris burning? Upon hearing the threats against Paris, General uh, de Gaulle and the Free French had threatened to pull out of the Allied plans and make a dash to save Paris uh, with their own strength. The general uh, general did not follow Hitler's order to the burn to burn the town. He did not want to go down in history. The article said, as the man who ordered the destruction of Europe's favorite city, called the City of Lights. Uh, this article goes on to say that one by the name of General Eisenhower had decided to bypass the city, but de Gaulle convinced him that little resistance would be met if the Allies had taken Paris. Well, the teller said the resistance or the advancing Americans wiped out the only few amen uh, um, uh, collaborators and the German pockets of resistance, and by August 29th, Paris was free. It says that General de Gaulle enters, amen, now uh, he has set Paris free. He enters into the city the next day known as a conquering hero. After four long years of suffering under the occupation of the German SS troops and Gestapo, Paris finally became free once again. Uh, he addressed the Paris of uh, Parisians and the world and said, Paris, Paris, outraged. Paris broken and Paris martyred, but Paris liberated. And I said that to say this, beloved of God, that today as we look at our text, we observe and see the entrance of another conqueror into a city that was under occupation of foreign military troops. Jerusalem was celebrating the triumphal entry of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, as he entered into the city. The Bible says that Jesus came riding into the city on a donkey early the first day of the week. And I can see them as he rode down the path to the city gates and passing through the massive stone gates and walls of the city and into the streets. There was a multitude of people that come out to meet him and to make him welcome in their city. Their cry unto Jesus was Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You must understand, beloved of God, about the earthly ministry of Jesus who is called the Christ. His ministry was actually coming to an end. The plan of God for salvation of mankind was coming to its completion. And we all know that Jesus was soon be going to the cross to die but it's hard for us to imagine y'all how it is how that the same crowd who praised Jesus and looked to Jesus as the Messiah on Palm Sunday was so quickly turned into the mob and demanded his crucifixion five days later and I wonder beloved of God have it, how have you ever had folk amen to smile in your voice one day and the next day they stab you in your back uh, these folk, amen, on Palm Sunday as Jesus entered into the city, these people were standing up crying, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed be the son of David. They were giving him praise, but if you will continue to read on, you will find out that these same folk are the same one that will cry and crucify him. Have I got me a witness in here? And I ask the question, Minister Smith, what was it that brought about such a huge change in their attitude? What was it that caused them to change their mind so drastically? Uh, let us remember, beloved of God, because if you read the context of the text, just a few event, events that had happened in the short period of Jesus' public ministry prior to him riding into Jerusalem on the donkey, Jesus. 
Jesus had performed many miracles of healing and deliverance during his three and a half years of ministry. Uh, if you go to the context of the text, you will find that Jesus had turned water into wine. He, he cast out the demons of the men of the Gadarenes. He, he raised up the widow of Nain's son from the dead. And just a few days later before he come triumphant into Jerusalem, he has just raised Lazarus from the grave. Have I got me a witness in here? Of course, when you understand, beloved of God, he done many of things that we cannot even number, but suffice to say that he had gained a large number of people has started following him who began to believe that Jesus was their promised Messiah. They believed y'all based on what they saw and heard Jesus do, that he was the one that had come to deliver them from bondage. Uh, Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the cold that day and as he entered the city as a king, but he rode in as one who will enter, watch this now, to signify that his interest was a peaceful interest. Can you say amen? He didn't come to stir up trouble. He didn't come, amen, as any other king because you understand that when kings enter as conquerors, uh -huh, a, 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 a study tells me that they will enter into the city riding up on stallions. Uh -huh, they will be riding up on stallions in the head of their military entourage. When they entered, amen, if they enter in peace, they would ride up on on a coat. I said when somebody will come and enter into the city as a conqueror, they will come in on a stallion. Y'all know them big stallions. They will come with an entourage behind him. But here comes Jesus who comes and enters to the city as a peace. And anyone who enters into the city as a peace will ride upon a coat. Have I got me a witness in here? No matter how the king enter y'all the people turn to praise them as they roll through the gates. Jesus, here it is, being the very son of God could have chosen y'all to enter into Jerusalem on that day on a stallion, but it was not God's plan, so Jesus did not ride into Jerusalem as a conqueror. He came in on a call to signify how that his reign will usher in a time of peace. Have I got me a witness in here? Jesus came in to let us know, y'all, that his kingdom would not be a kingdom that would be taken by the might of men or to cast out those who reign over Israel. He let them know, y'all, that his kingdom would be a kingdom of peace that would be established in the hearts of those that bleed upon the name of the Lord. And as you understand and you get a picture of what I'm talking about along with Jesus came his 12 disciples walking behind him. They followed them behind the 12 disciples. There was a great crowd that had gone out to meet him and as he approached the city the Bible says that his disciples had thrown their coats over the coat like a blanket, a blanket and Jesus sat there on while others would cut down palm branches and they make a path for the king of king. Can you say amen? Place in the heaven let me help me out with this because placing their coats and palm branches upon the ground y'all was symbolic of honor uh, they will honor the king with their own support <laughs> when they threw their clothes down and put palm branches down they were saying Jesus we will help you no matter where you, you're not in this thing by yourself Jesus we support you we fight for you we serve you and you may reign over us as our king have I got me a witness in here uh, then they will cry out those words over and over again Hosanna to the son of David blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord Hosanna in the highest and I asked the question what were they saying by shouting these words Hosanna Mm -hmm. because I've always thought that when they were shouting praises to Jesus they were shouting him for him to be a prophet of God and because they believed in him to be the Messiah that is true but that's not all they were saying by shouting Hosanna can the church say amen 
First of all, how the, the, the shout was a shout of praise. Hosanna was a shout of praise which glorified the Son of God. Uh, there were many present with them at that time who believed that Jesus was the Son of, of God and all of his miracles had convinced them, y'all, then how that he was who he claimed to be. Can you say amen? How many of you know that the God that we serve is exactly who he claimed to be? How many of you know he's a way out of no way? How many of you know that the God that we serve, he will provide? Have I got me with how many of you know how that he's Jehovah Jireh? He's Jehovah Nisi. He's Jehovah Shalom. Have I got me a witness in here? He's exactly who he claimed. Uh, uh, to be uh, so understand the love of the God uh, these people were in the streets they were shouting an explanation of praise when they screamed Hosanna yeah, yeah, yeah. to the son of David uh, this was their way of saying to Jesus that we know that you are our Messiah and we come to praise you and I wonder child of God can you take out your spiritual imagination amen and just imagine and look at the scene with me here it is as he comes entering into the city he hears shouts and shouts of folk saying Hosanna praise God bless David the son of God uh, the son of David and he's he come you got people who follow him and those who lined in the streets with the, the cry will grow even louder and when here it is he entered into the gates the crowds was waiting outside joining with those who follow and together shouts will become louder and magnify a mighty roar let me let me help you make it plain it's just like this right here brother Jonas uh, are you coming down Poplar Hill Church Road when you turn on Poplar Hill Church Road you have an entourage of folk behind you praising God for you hold on for a minute sir I think when you come up to the church you got another entourage of people and then when you come through the foyer you got a whole bunch of people standing up in honoring your presence this is how it was with Jesus have I got me a witness in here and the cry was so loud you can hear it all over Polkin, North Carolina have I got me a witness in here and even those who did not know what was going on had run to see what was the problem what was this big uproar and how many of you know that when things are happening crowds come together people will come just to see what's going on have I got me a witness here in this place and when they find out watch this now when they find out what's going on they will go back and tell somebody else how everybody knows have I got me a witness here in this place but watch this beloved of God while the crowd and the disciples shouted the praises up to their Messiah the Bible tells us how that there were some scribes and some Pharisees there were some church folk there have I got me a witness in here that was crazy offended they said who do they think that this Jesus is thinking they coming into Jerusalem as a king and they told Jesus they said Jesus when you tell the people to hold their peace and Jesus said I tell you this that if these hold their peace immediately the rocks will cry out and listen I just stopped by to tell you how they in here that God deserves your praise he deserves your worship and have I got me a witness in here the devil is telling you right now that you not to give God praise the devil is trying to get you not to worship him but I come to let the devil know that ain't nothing nobody going to stop me from praising my God. Have I got me a witness in here? Because God has been good to me. He's brought me through so much and I'm not going to allow the devil to tell me to shut my mouth. I come, have I got me a witness in here? I come in here with the mindset to let the devil know that if it had not been for the Lord God Almighty who was on my side. Have I got me a witness in here? I come to let the devil know Tell you something that folk were trying to 
control your wants. And if man's situation, anybody can control your wants, then that must be your God. That's why God be a witness in here. You got to be able to say and say, for God I live and for God I die. That's why God be a witness in here. You got to look at the devil, say in the way and say, Pray. It's he that seek me, and he that seek the world. Can somebody go before your feet and say, He's worthy to so be praised. And I don't know about you, but I don't need no rock to praise him because you praise him. My God is worthy. Would you shout? Have sung to me. Tell your neighbor, say, neighbor, I got to praise him. I got to lift him up. I got to give him what I said. Just touch me, people say, worship, worship, worship. Yeah. I say, y'all sit down, settle in your saddle. This is, this is the of God. It is him, people of God, that, at, uh, that this was his moment of recognition for Jesus Christ because they were praising him for who he was. Jesus was the son of God. Jesus was the Messiah. He was their king. But they would never understand watch this now. The fullness of just who he was because he was not coming to establish his kingdom on the earth. Have I got me witnessing? The Bible said that they cried Hosanna. Praise Jesus. The son of David. Praise Jesus. The Messiah. Praise Jesus. Our deliverer. Watch this. But they didn't really fully know who Jesus was. Have I got me a witness in here? In other words, they were saying who he was. But didn't understand who he was. Uh, they were saying who he was because that's what they were told. Huh? But they never done research to find out who he is. And isn't that the same way it is in the churches today? Folk will say stuff because that's what they heard. But they never took the time to search the scripture to see if what they heard was true. Listen to me, yo. Huh? The scripture tells us in Acts chapter 17 that after Paul had preached at Thessalonica, huh, that after church they went home and searched the scripture huh, to see if what they heard was true. Amen. Amen. Amen, somebody. Watch this now because when they search and study the scriptures, they can understand. And the Bible said, with all that getting, get. I got some Bible readers in here. Watch this now because when you get understanding, you get discernment. And when you can discern, folk just can't tell you any old thing. Have I got me a witness in here? That's how come every time you're bucking yourself, but you don't know what you're shouting about. Have I got me a witness in here? Uh, and then somebody just say, here comes Jesus. You know, Humped it up, fell on, sat on the wall. Humped it You got to search the scriptures. Have I got me a witness in here? The Bible said that they would shout Hosanna. Get the church shout Hosanna. Come on, you sound like you're Presbyterian. Somebody shout Hosanna. God, that's what I'm talking Now you sound like you're from the hill. Watch this. Hosanna also means to say now. Or save, I pray. As the crowd shout out Hosanna, watch this, blessed be the king that cometh in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. It said Hosanna in the highest. They were actually crying out to Jesus to begin the thing that will free them from the Roman rule. What they were saying is when they cried Hosanna, they were saying, Jesus, we want you to set us free from man. Watch this now, because I begin to understand y'all and see why the attitude would change so quickly in coming days. Watch this, because they believed that Jesus was the Messiah who would come to usher in a day of freedom. 
watch this now and the prosperity for the nation of Israel that they will be free from slavery and oppression of the Romans they will finally know the peace that God had promised Watch this now. And when you understand this people of God, that's the kind of Messiah that mankind is looking for. Uh, people don't want to serve God who will establish his kingdom of peace in their hearts uh, with a promise of eternal life. And what God been witnessing here, that's why they was like the children of Israel when they God picked Saul and, and they said, we want a king over us. We want a physical king, one that we can see, one that is tangible. And it was God when they didn't have no king that brought them, that brought them through the wilderness. It was God that gave them water from a rock. It was God that gave them manna from heaven. Have I got no witness in here? But they look at all these other nations that's got kings. And they cry, we want a physical king. Watch this now, how they wanted a Messiah that will give them a perfect life on earth and give them a kingdom in the here and now. How many of you know you got to look beyond the here and now? How many of you know you just can't live for here and now? You got to look beyond. Have I got me a witness in here? That's why you understand you don't need faith for where you come from and where you're at right now. You need faith for where you are going. Have I got me a witness in here? Watch this here. Jesus said in Matthew chapter 10 verses 34 and 36. And I got to get up out of here. Think not that I come to send peace on earth. He said I came not to send peace but a sword. I am come to send a man at variance against his father. And the daughter against her mother. And the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a man's foe shall be that of his own household. Have I got in other words? He said that a man's worst enemy can be they that are in his own household. How many of you know you can be sleeping with the enemy? How many of you know you can be God Almighty? No, you can be living with the enemy. David said it like this. David said, when we went to church, David said, I found out that it wasn't the ones that was at the church that was talking about me. It was the one that I came to church with. Have I got me a witness in this? Jesus said, I come to set down you. Watch this, y'all. But Jesus didn't ride in Jerusalem on the coat that day huh, to signify that he would establish an earthly kingdom of peace and prosperity. He was riding in as the Messiah huh, that he would bring more of a division than deliverance. Y'all didn't shout off for that. Uh, well, what he would provide for Israel's deliverance, they wouldn't accept. Oh God, uh, the Jews didn't want a sacrifice for sin, they wanted a king. God Almighty Lord, they didn't want a spiritual deliverer, they wanted an earthly deliverer. Hey God, I feel your presence Lord. They didn't want a Messiah, uh, there will be a lamb led to the slaughter who will die on the cross for them. They wanted a Messiah that will lead them in battle and live for them as a conquering hero. Have I got me a winner? And I come to tell you that that's our trouble today because we only focus on what is visible to the eye and what is tangible. Have I got me a witness in here? We only focus on what we can see. But let me tell you this, the Bible says for our light affliction, which is but for a moment working for us, a far more than exceeding external way of glory. Why we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Have I got me a witness in this place? So understand, beloved of God, as I get ready to take my seat, this is the reason why Jesus rode into Jerusalem that day. It was a triumphal entry in the greatest sense of the word. Sister Kim, he rode in as a king who was coming to conquer death, hell, and the grave. He was coming to conquer Satan and every demonic power that existed. Have I got me a witness? here. Uh, the same ones that cried Hosanna 
when the same one that cried crucify him the shouts of praise turn into shouts of anger have I got me a witness here the palm branches became torches y'all which signified the hatred that began to burn in their heart because they felt like they have been misled they felt like they have been betrayed have I got me a witness here they kind of reminded me about Jeremiah Jeremiah chapter 20 verse 7 he said oh Lord you have to see me have I got me a witness in here but I come to tell you it don't make any difference to me if you like him or not because that's my king and he's the king of kings and he's the Lord of lords and if y'all don't mind let me tell you a little about my king my king was born of a king the bible said he's a seven way king he's the king of the Jews he's the king of Israel he's the king of righteousness he's the king of the ages he's the king of heaven and he's the king of glory he's the king of kings and the lord of lords I'm talking about my king and I wonder do you know him do you know him and don't try to mislead me do you know my king David said the heaven declare his glory and the firmament shows his handiwork my king y'all that's the measure that can define his love have I got me a witness here he's enduringly strong He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast and ignorantly grateful. I'm talking about my king. He's a God son and he's a sinner savior. Have I got me a witness in here? He's a miracle, the miracle of the age. He's a super lady of everything good. Have I got me a witness in here? My king, y'all. Give strength to the weak. Have I got me a witness here? He's available for the tempted and he's available for the tired. He sympathizes and he saves. Have I got me a witness in here? My king, y'all, is a king of knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's the doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. He's a roadway of righteousness. He's a highway of holiness. He's a gateway to glory. He's a master, y'all. He's a master of the night. He's a captain of the conqueror. He led here the heroes. He's the leader of the legislators. He's the overseer of overcomers. He's the governor of governors. He's the prince of princes. Can I talk about my king? His voice is manifold. And his presence are sure. His light is matchless. His goodness is liberty. And his mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word always in good. Have I got me a witness in here? I come to tell you, I'm talking about my king. I can't describe him because he's all this undescribable. That's my king, y'all. He's inconsequential and he's invincible and he's irresistible. Have I got me a witness here? I come to tell you about my king. The heavens of heavens, they can't contain him. No man, y'all, can fully explain him. You can't count him out of your mouth. You can't get him off your hands. You cannot live him. See, you can't live without him. Have I got me a witness here? Pharisees couldn't stand him. So they found out they couldn't stop him. He couldn't be killed. Herod couldn't kill him. And death couldn't handle him. And the grave couldn't hold him. That's my king. Have I got me a witness here? And I wonder, is there anybody here? Do you know anything about my king? Somebody said, he's a weevil in the middle of the week. Somebody said, 